Here, we will discuss one of the major issues with test automation and how to overcome them with test projects. Flaky tests are inconsistent tests, sometimes pass and sometimes fail. Flaky tests can be quite time consuming and difficult to deal with, often requiring retriggering entire CI builds. Let's talk about the reasons for this flakiness. One reason are false positive actions. In some cases where your action reported successful, but in reality didn't achieve their desired outcome. For example, a click or a tap that happened while your page was still loading. The click was successful, but nothing else happened. Another reason might be asynchronous web events. In some cases, server-side events are asynchronously generated and appear on the screen. It can affect your UI, and since automation depends on the UI, it'll break it. Another reason can be device variations and configurations. High cost versus low cost devices, different operating system builds on the same platform, different visualization and execution speeds, internet connection speeds and loading times, as well as server side speeds, can be a very big enemy for automation. The most major cause for flakiness is changes in your application's DOM. These changes can result from dynamic UIs with dynamic IDs and elements, or changes made by the development team during the application's lifecycle. The test project platforms offers various tools to improve your automation for web and mobile applications. In this video, we'll show you how to tackle these issues in your tests and what tips and tricks you can use. But first, let's discuss the AI tools that test project provides to handle those issues. The second tool is the adaptive wait, a mechanism that will ensure all conditions are met so that the automation succeeds. It is very useful for different loading times and network connection speeds. For false positive, Test Project has the Automation Assistant that will analyze each of your tests and detect when the action didn't reach its target goal. It will attempt to fix it automatically for you. The third powerful feature is the self-healing. It will automatically construct a variety of locator strategies that can be used when others fail, meaning all web and mobile elements are located by multiple locator strategies when your UI changes or is dynamic or the application changes through the development lifecycle. Now let's deep dive and see an example of how to reduce flakiness in your tests. Let's create a web test to see how the test project AI helps you to reduce flakiness in your automation and improve your Selenium codeless tests. Let's choose a real-world application to see how it works. Currently, I just have the test project agent installed and running on my machine, and also the Chrome browser on my desktop. The agent will take care of pulling the correct driver and opening a clean Chrome session for me. Let's create a simple test flow of booking a vacation through the site. You can always move around and minimize the recorder if you think it's interfering with your testing. After selecting our destination and dates, adding a few guests, we'll search for relevant accommodations. After performing the search, we'll filter out a few of our results and then make our selection. Here we can see the recorder interacting with various pop-up windows as multiple asynchronous events happen in the background, such as the map rendering based on the selected criteria, new Chrome tabs opening, and more. The recorder is handling this type of complicated application seamlessly. Now that we've finished creating our flow, we can take a look at where the AI tools are located. As you can see, we've created quite a complex flow with 24 different steps. Let's go to the test settings. Here, you can find the adaptive weight feature. As mentioned previously, the adaptive weight feature can reduce the flakiness of your tests by waiting for the entire application's environment to be ready before performing the step. It won't wait for the entire duration. It's just a maximum threshold. 
If we increase it, it won't affect the execution time of your test. From here, you can also find the Automation Assistant, which is always on by default. The Automation Assistant will identify scenarios where the expected step didn't happen and will attempt to fix them dynamically. The self-healing AI that locates elements by multiple locators comes into play when you interact with elements in your application. For example, if we inspect step 2, which is an element-based action, we can see that the element was located by five different locators. If the application changes during development or has dynamic layouts and dynamic web elements, the element will still be found. Now, let's run the test from the beginning to see how the test project AI tools you receive straight out of the box help you with your testing. We can already see the test project AI stabilizing the test. If not for this, it could have already been failed. Here, we can already see an example of the adaptive weight working with asynchronous web events that cause the DOM of the application to change. As we can see, the entire test passed as expected. But what would happen if we didn't have these features? Let's disable the automation assistant and then run the test again. The test project AI will still try to stabilize your tests with the adaptive weight, but this time without any assistance from the automation assistant. Let's take a look at our test results. And as we can see, the test failed. Let's go back to the test settings and re-enable the Automation Assistant. In addition to re-enabling the Automation Assistant, let's also demonstrate how the self-healing works. Let's once again open a step and then change the locator to an invalid one, forcing the self-healing to take place during the next execution. Now, let's once again run the test to see the power of the free tools working the background together to improve your automation experience and reduce your test flakiness. The element whose locator we have changed is attempting to be used here. As we can see, the test project AI is going to use one of the alternative strategies to heal the step so our test won't fail. In this execution, once again, our test is going to be stabilized by the test project AI, using the adaptive weight, and this time, once again, the automation assistance. After the execution, we can see that self-healing was performed and the locator was updated. You can also see that the entire test passed this time using the automation assistance. Now, let's once again understand what is a flaky test. 
A flaky test is a test that works while recording, but during execution, it fails, or sometimes fails, and sometimes passes. This flakiness can be caused by various reasons, such as the difference in the machines you work on, site loading speeds, and anything else we talked about at the beginning of this video. Now, let's summarize by talking about the tips and tricks you can use in test project to reduce the flakiness of your tests. You can increase the adaptive wait time to patient or very patient, or even use your own custom value. Once again, this won't slow down your test, this will be used just as the maximum threshold. The second thing you can do is always make sure that your automation assistant is on. As we've seen in this video, this can help save your test and reduce flakiness. If your tests are still flaky, you can reduce the overall execution speed of your test. You can change it to slow or even turtle slow. This is suggested because some sites are not built for fast automation. Some sites are built to be used by humans only and are built to accommodate that, or in case you're running on Docker containers and the execution is slower in general. If you override the execution speed or the adaptive weight, make sure you don't also override them at the step level. Otherwise, what you have set in the step level will be used instead of the test level. If you still experience flakiness at certain points in your test, we recommend using validations. Validations are best used when screens change in your application. The reason we recommend these validations is because the validations use the test project adaptive wait as well. These validations will wait until your page is ready before going forward and can be used as checkpoints to validate if everything is going fine in your test. You can use any validation on any element at any point during your test.